Welcome back, Blue Shirts fans, to episode number 750 of the Locked On New York Rangers podcast. I'm your host, John Chick. Just want to thank you guys, as always, for making Locked On New York Rangers your first listen every day. We are free and available on all platforms. And the Rangers, just a short time ago here, wrapping up a disappointing 2-1 to home loss against the Montreal Canadiens. And we're going to get to that and break down all the details of everything that happened in that game. But as I just mentioned, this is episode number 750 of Locked On New York Rangers. Mini milestone here. So, uh, you know, I... I just want to thank you guys, as always, you know, for always tuning in and uh, supporting the show any way that you do. It's been really cool to, you know, get to know some of you guys over the past couple of years, the past couple of seasons, go uh, around this crazy roller coaster that we call New York Ranger Hockey together. A lot of ups, a lot of downs, you know, through the rebuild, and then last year, the crazy playoff run, and, uh, you know, God only knows what's going to happen with this team this year. I'm at the point as a Ranger fan, nothing would really surprise me. I'm hopeful, and I'm optimistic about this group, but uh, yeah, nothing nothing will surprise me. That's kind of where I'm at, and a lot of you are probably uh, right there with me. But yeah, 750 episodes. You know, it's so cliche to say that, like, oh, you know, time has passed so fast, and, you know, I, I feel like we just started this show. But, I mean, the one thing I will say, I feel like we did episode 700, like, six days ago. I, these last 50 or so have just absolutely blown by. And here we are, you know, halfway through, uh, or more than halfway through, another season of New York Ranger Hockey, the fourth season of Locked On New York Rangers, and uh, yeah, it's been an absolute joy to cover this team and talk Ranger hockey with all you guys and, and just do this show on a daily basis. It's really been a blast, and again, thank you all uh, for supporting the show in any way that you do. I wanted to, uh, you know, shift our attention now to the game against the Canadians. Obviously, once again, the Rangers disappointing game uh, against Montreal, losing 2-1, to one, a game where the Rangers just never really hit fifth gear. There were times where it was looking like they were starting to find their game a little bit, and then it would fizzle out. I think a great example of that is, you know, the last, I would say, about 13 minutes, maybe 12 minutes of the first period, I thought the Rangers really looked good, uh, skating well, creating a lot of scoring chances, and, you know, you think they're eventually going to break through. They weren't able to do it in the first period. Second period, though, kind of just fizzled out. You know, it got away from them, and uh, they just were not able to keep their foot on the gas, and the Canadians kind of took over. They took the lead. The Rangers tie it, and then the Canadians, of course, get the game winner in the uh, third period. I'm going to talk about the possibility of this game being a letdown for, for the Rangers. I try not to do too many classic sports cliches like letdown and trap game and all this other stuff, but if there was ever a case of uh, a game being a letdown, it might be this one. You know, the last game, dramatic victory against the first place Dallas Stars, scoring with less than a second left, winning in overtime, Garden going crazy. Now you're out there against a team that you beat about a week ago or about a week and a half ago, the Rangers beat the Canadians fairly easily. Canadians not having a great season. And the Rangers, again, they just never really found their A game uh, pretty much from start to finish uh, in this one. So we're going to talk about the possibility of a letdown. Also going to give Igor Shosturkin uh, some much-deserved credit for uh, coming up big for the Rangers in this game, making some really nice saves, especially early. You know, early in this game, I don't think either team really felt like playing a whole lot of defense at the start of this one because the Rangers were putting the puck at the net as well. Um, but, you know, a little bit of a early goaltender duel. And, uh, yeah, again, the, the Rangers team defense just wasn't what it needed to be. But Igor picked them up more often than not. Was not able to pull a rabbit out of his hat, though, and uh, win this game, despite not getting a ton of help. Also going to talk about this Ranger power play that's kind of a mess right now. You know, and it wasn't just the fact that they went 0 for 2 tonight. I mean, that's going to happen from time to time. But they just weren't good. Didn't look dangerous. Never really looked like they were going to score. So going to talk about that. And uh, like I said, we'll go ahead and we'll start with the uh, idea that maybe this game was a little bit of a letdown. And let me just preface this entire, you know, section here by saying that I am aware of the fact that there is a uh, stomach bug going through the Ranger locker room. Gerard Gallant said as much in a recent presser. And so obviously that could still be affecting players. Maybe it's affected players over the last handful of games. The thing is, I don't know who had the stomach bug, who now currently has the stomach bug who maybe caught the stomach bug earlier today. Uh, it's an unfortunate situation. Being sick is rough. Um, anybody who's, I mean, everybody's been sick at one time or another in their lives, but you guys know what I'm talking about. You know, there's times where if I'm sick, I, I don't feel like picking my, my head off the pillow, much less playing a professional sport. So, um, you know, again, it, it's tough because we don't know which players are sick and which guys I should be grading on a curve and which ones were at full 
uh, full health tonight and just weren't able to do a whole lot. So, uh, But I, I just wanted to at least mention that, that there is a stomach bug going around, and maybe that had something to do with the uh, lackluster uh, performance tonight, the overall lackluster performance. It wasn't a complete disaster. Rangers have played worse games than this one this season. But, you know, home against Montreal, that should be a win, and unfortunately it was not. And, you know, the other thing, too, and I mentioned this just a second ago, the Rangers beat the Canadians with relative ease. Uh, about a week and a half ago in Montreal, Rangers won that game uh, four to one. And it's one of those games where they were pretty much in control from start to finish. I mean, I wouldn't say that they were skating circles around them, but pretty much from right when the puck dropped in that one until that game ended, uh, there was never any real reason to believe that the Rangers were in any danger of not winning that game. And of course, they got the job done there. Um, so for all those reasons, you know, the big win against the Stars, possible that they had a little bit of a letdown here. And I will somewhat... Uh, graciously, what's the word here? I will somewhat generously, there we go. I will somewhat generously accept that as long as they turn around. I'm big on how a team responds after a game like this. As long as they turn around, they go into Columbus tomorrow night, Monday night against the Blue Jackets, and they find a way to get two points. You cannot be leaving points on the table against bad teams, which is something the Rangers have done too much already this season. Now they do it again against the Canadians. You better not do it against the Blue Jackets, a team that uh, pretty much walloped the Rangers earlier this season. I think the Blue Jackets beat the Rangers something like 5-1 to one in Madison Square Garden earlier this year. So, you know what? I realize it's the second game of a back-to-back. -back. I realize it's probably going to be Halak and not Igor. You got to find a way to go in there, bounce back, get two points. And the stomach bug too. But, you know what? Let's dig down and make sure that uh, we salvage at least part of this back-to-back. -back. But, you know, changing gears just a little bit here, uh, I mentioned a second ago that I thought Igor Shesterkin was really good in this game, really kept the Rangers in it, uh, especially early, and he ends up with 29 saves on 31 shots. I just want to go through at least a couple of the highlights here. We're not going to do all of them, or that could be, you know, the, the majority of this episode. But, you know, early in this game, that's when Igor was at his best. A lot of good chances for the Canadians where the Rangers were caught a little bit flat-footed, a couple of rushes into the zone, a couple of turnovers by the Rangers in their own zone that led to some scoring chances. Um... You know, Adam Fox actually kind of got burnt by Cole Caulfield here, and you don't see this happen to Adam Fox very much. Fox had position, and Cole uh, Caulfield went around him to the outside and just kind of got by him and got to the net and faked a shot, kept going. Igor stayed with him all the way. Great save there. That was in the first minute of the action. Uh, not too long after that, Igor made a, a really nice glove stop as well. And then uh, another situation where uh, Demora gets behind the defense, up the right wing, a little backhand forehand, and a great save by Igor Shosturkin there, turned it aside. Uh, he also made a ridiculous sliding save against Slavkowski to his right. Igor made a couple of saves moving from left to right on this night uh, to keep the puck out. Like I said, he was on top of his game. Then, and keep in mind, this is we're all still in the first period here. This is all still the first period and relatively early in the first. Uh, Rangers had a turnover. You know, everybody kind of started to head up the ice because I think all the skaters on the ice on the Rangers just kind of assumed that the puck was going to come out of the zone. Uh, it did not. And then you had Dadanoff who kind of stayed behind, and he received a pass in front. So he has all day. I mean, he's there by himself. He can do pretty much whatever he wants. And Igor stays with him, squares him up, makes a great save there. So Igor sharp early, sharp all night really, but really saving the Rangers bacon in the first you know, five to maybe eight minutes of this game coming up big uh, for this team. And one other that I wanted to highlight here was in the third period. Uh, once again, another sliding save with Igor moving from left to right. This one against Armia. Basically what happened, uh, Igor had the puck and Truba was moving toward him. And I think Igor wanted to leave it for Truba. And Truba thought that Igor was going to try to pass it up the ice. So there was some miscommunication. And then Igor still had the puck and he had to get rid of it. Uh, played it off the glass. Canadians got it back in pretty quickly, and they got that scoring chance, but Igor makes the save there as well, and probably going to see Yaroslav a lock in the next game. Uh, Igor deserved better than, than the loss tonight, but uh, yeah, again, just, just something of a lackluster performance for the Rangers overall, but you know, we're just scratching the surface as far as this game is concerned. I definitely want to talk about some of the line combinations, some of the players for the Rangers that are now in the lineup, some of the guys that are out of the lineup. Uh, we got a call-up from the AHL as well, so we're going to spend some time on that. Also, uh, got to do a little mini call-out of the Ranger power play, which uh, has not been good at all lately. And again, in a game like this, it's not just the fact that they went over for 2 It's the fact that there just weren't a lot of scoring chances. Not a whole lot going on uh, on the Ranger power play, especially on the first of those two opportunities. But uh, we will get to all that stuff in just a second. But first, just got to let everybody know that today's episode of Locked on New York Rangers is brought to you by Athletic Greens. I started taking AG1 because I wanted a supplement that actually tastes great, and I wanted to see what all the hype was about. Now, I've been on it for about eight months, and I love it. 
Doesn't taste like it's super healthy. Has kind of a mild tropical taste that I actually look forward to each morning. So what is this stuff? With one delicious scoop of AG1, you're absorbing 75 high-quality vitamins, minerals, whole food source superfoods, probiotics, and aptogens to help you start your day right. This special blend of ingredients supports your gut health, nervous system, immune system, energy recovery, focus, and aging. It is lifestyle-friendly, whether you eat keto, paleo, vegan, dairy-free, or gluten-free. It costs you less than $3 a day, you're investing in your health, and it's cheaper than your cold brew at it. Athletic Greens has over 7,000 five-star reviews. Right now, it's time to reclaim your health and arm your immune system with convenient daily nutrition. It's just one scoop and a cup of water every day. That's it. No need for a million different pills and supplements to look out for your health. To make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash NHL Network. Again, it's athleticgreens.com slash NHL Network to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. All right, so we just want to thank you guys, as always, for making Locked On New York Rangers your first listen every day. We are free and available on all platforms, including YouTube. All right, so let's go ahead and talk a little bit about these line combinations. And we should actually start uh, by talking about some of the players who are not available to the Rangers right now and some of the players who have slotted into the lineup as a result of that. Uh, Still no Chris Kreider, and I feel like it's easy to say this, you know, that, that the Rangers uh, haven't been scoring a lot of goals over these last handful of games here, and Kreider's missed the last two games. But yeah, I mean, I, I think they definitely miss him. He's obviously one of their uh, better players, uh, somebody who can be a little bit hot and cold, but obviously the Rangers rely on him to do a lot. He's big time on the Ranger power play. Uh, obviously, he's very adept at those deflection goals in front. He can clean up the loose change, and uh, him and Mika and Kako were really clicking uh, before he went down with the injury. So obviously the Rangers miss Chris Kreider right now. We'll keep our fingers crossed that he's back in the lineup sooner rather than later. Uh, the dreaded upper body injury claimed another another victim in Chris Kreider. Um, but they made it sound like they expect him back sooner rather than later. We'll see. You know, obviously, I'm not sure how likely it is. And I'm just guessing here. You know, that this is nothing but guesswork. I'm not sure how likely it is that he's back in there against the Blue Jackets one day after uh, the game tonight against the uh, against the Canadians because, you know, it's just one day later. And, you know, if you didn't play him in this one, you may not want to play him in the next one. But it's at least possible. You know, maybe they wouldn't want to have him come back uh, playing both games of a back-to-back. So you just put him back out there for the second game. Also very possible that we don't see Kreider until the game after their next game, which will be Thursday against the Boston Bruins. And that'd be a, a big game to have him back for because obviously Boston is a very good team. But he was out tonight, as was Julian Gauthier. Gauthier... Uh, placed on injured reserve with, say it with me now, an upper body injury. And the upper body injury just wreaking havoc uh, across the Rangers and probably across this league as well. Um, but that resulted in a call-up for Ryan Carpenter. Carpenter obviously uh, was here with the Rangers at the start of the season. Uh, he signed a one-year deal at the league minimum of $750,000. He just has kind of a nondescript game. And I think after a while, you know, he kind of just got squeezed out of the Ranger lineup. Uh, the Rangers... Had to place him on waivers to send him down to the Wolf Pack. Nobody claimed him, so he went to the Wolf Pack. And, uh, you know, by all accounts, had a very good attitude with Hartford, played pretty well there. And so uh, he'll get an extra or an additional opportunity here. He obviously did not play in this game here tonight. Um, you know, they wanted to give Jake LeCision a chance and, and more on, on him in just a second. But he made his Ranger debut in this one. Carpenter, you know, the one thing he certainly has going for him, well, two things really. Um, he can kill penalties and he plays center. And center is always kind of at a premium in this league. You can never have too many centers on your NHL roster. At least guys that can play the position can never have too many centers in your pipeline either. So yeah, I mean, we'll see. We'll see if Carpenter slots back in. I'll be curious to see if he's the guy, um, you know, against the Blue Jackets or if they give Jake LeCision another chance. LeCision is somebody that uh, played on the Vegas Golden Knights. We talked about him briefly in our most recent episode, but he got his first chance uh, to play for the Rangers in this game. And he was actually centering the fourth line. He had Blay on his left wing, Brodzinski on his right wing. And, you know, given that it was his debut, I, I figure we might as well just run through his stats real quick. He was an even plus minus, two shots on goal, two hits, one half of his uh, face-offs, and had a team low six minutes and 47 seconds on the ice. And honestly, nothing really stood out one way or another for LeCision. The limited time on the ice certainly has something to do with that. But, you know, I'll 
do my best to keep uh, an eye on him if he's playing against the Blue Jackets. We'll see if the Rangers give him another chance or if they go back to uh, Carpenter and give him another another opportunity. It's also possible that, you know, maybe both of them are in the lineup. You could always uh, take Brodzinski out. You could take Simi Blay out. Uh, and, you know, we'll, we'll see what uh, combination the Rangers look to go with with the fourth line. But this also goes something that goes back to something that I talked about in a recent episode, um, that being that there's – Quite the position battle uh, as far as spots on the fourth line are currently uh, concerned, uh, especially now with a couple of these injuries. Like I said, Kreider was out of the lineup. Gautier was out of the lineup. So Goodrow moves from the fourth line up to the third line. And that pretty much means that the fourth line, it's kind of all hands on deck as far as, you know, the Rangers depth players. Uh, there's spots up for grabs. You know, tonight from left to right, it was Blay, LeCision, and Brodzinski. But I don't think any of those guys are slam dunks to be in the lineup on any given night. Um, you never know when Gustav Riedal might get another chance, although uh, my understanding is he was a healthy scratch uh, for the Wolfpack not too long ago, so that's not the best sign as far as his prospects for you know, joining the Rangers and making a positive impact. But, you know, he could be involved, um, you know, and Gautier, whenever he comes back, you figure he'll probably slot back into the lineup. Uh, we'll see. We'll see. There's obviously a lot of different ways that this could play out. But LeCision, you know, the little I saw of him in this game here tonight, I thought he did fine, certainly did not stand out in a negative way. And uh, like I said, very curious to see uh, whether it'll be him or Carpenter or maybe both of them and either Brodzinski or Blake come out of the lineup. Uh, we shall see how the Rangers look to play it. And could be something of a rotation uh, going forward, at least in the short term, before guys like Kreider get back in the lineup and Gautier get back in the lineup and just kind of naturally squeeze a couple of these guys out. Um, but yeah, I figure uh, in just a second, we'll keep everything rolling. I do want to turn our attention to the... Uh, Ranger power play, which, as I've mentioned a couple times already here in this episode, uh, has not been great recently. Got a couple of stats to back that up, and we're just going to go through the two-man advantages that the Rangers had in this one and just kind of try to put our finger on uh, exactly what's going on, what went wrong, and what the Rangers can do to uh, hopefully rectify the situation. Also want to talk a little bit about uh, a very curious decision uh, that was made by Gerard Gallant as far as personnel late in this game with the Rangers uh, trailing by a goal. And overall, I like Gallant, but... You know, certain criticisms that get thrown at him from Ranger fans, I, I think at times are fair. And I didn't even have to check Twitter. I wasn't really on Twitter tonight. I get the feeling there were probably people putting this out, the thing that I'm going to talk about. But I'll, I'll say that for just a second. Uh, we will get to all that good stuff in just a minute here. But first, just got to let everybody know that today's episode of Locked on New York Rangers is brought to you by BetOnline.net. BetOnline.net is your number one source for sports betting info, stats, news, and analysis. Get the latest odds and trends for every professional and amateur league. From pro football to hockey to basketball and the upcoming MLB season, we've got it all at betonline.net. And if you love sports podcasts, you can even find those at BetOnline as well. We are always the fastest and easiest way to get your betting info. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more. BetOnline, where the game starts. All right, we just want to thank you guys, as always, for making Lockdown Rangers your first listen every day. We are free and available on all platforms, including YouTube. So the Ranger power play, where do we begin? I mean, first of all, we should probably, again, point out the fact that Chris Kreider was not available. He's a huge part of this power play, and you have a unit that's already struggling that's missing one of its most important players. So I get that. I guess you grade on a slight curve here, but the bottom line is they should be able to survive uh, a Chris Kreider injury and him missing a couple of games here and figure out a way to put the puck in the net, given the fact that, you know, they still have 80% of the top power play unit out there and available and ready to go. And you've got Alexi Lafreniere, uh, you know, taking Chris Kreider's spot, which isn't such a bad thing either. But yeah, the power play just has not been good lately. I mean, there's no other way to say it. And, you know, to just kind of break down everything that happened on the Ranger 2 power plays, let's start with the first one, because this one was uh, basically a disaster. Uh, for starters, though, let's give some props to J uh, Jacob Truba, yeah, uh, to Vincent Trocek for... Drawing a penalty here, getting the Rangers an opportunity in the uh, first period. Basically, Trocek goes in up the left side, made a ridiculous move, basically forced or uh, faked the defenseman out of his skates. Uh, he got slashed on the play, and so the Rangers go to the power play, and once again, Lafreniere is still slotting in for Chris Kreider. But you know, while this power play is going on, I'm just seeing too many guys standing still. Uh, everything just looks a little too deliberate. Everybody's looking for that perfect scoring opportunity instead of just kind of cutting it loose. Too much passing around the perimeter. I mean, the one thing they've been able to do mostly, and, and not even so much on this power play in particular, but other power plays that they've had recently, even ones that they have not scored on, they're able to at least 
get set up, you know, gain the zone, move the puck around a little bit, maintain possession, but that doesn't really do you a lot of good if, if you're just passing around, you know, up the boards and back to the blue line and across to the other side on the blue line. You got to get the puck into some high danger scoring chances, create some havoc in front of the net, um, try to screen the goalie. I'm just not seeing enough of that. And again, Kreider's absence does not help, but uh, got to figure out a way to, to look a little more dangerous than this because this power play uh, was was rough. One of, one of the worst uh, individual two-minute power plays I would say that the Rangers have had probably all season. You had a partial breakaway for the Canadians during this power play. Uh, I will say Mika Zibanejad, a really nice play, uh, getting back and helping to you know, limit the uh, scoring chance that the Canadians had there. But then the Rangers, you know, they go back in and you get a turnover in the offensive zone and the Canadians clear. And then, you know, after a completely lackluster showing from that top unit, uh, in typical Ranger fashion, the second power play unit only gets 25 seconds. That that seems to be like the moment that the Rangers' second power play unit tends to get on the ice. It's always exactly with 25 seconds left to go in the power play, which, as you know, uh, is not a whole lot of time to do a whole lot of anything. You know, the Rangers' second unit jumps on, and the puck is behind the Ranger net, and so they got to, you know, get the first unit off the ice, get the second unit on the ice, get control of the puck, start moving up the ice, gain the zone, try to set up. By the time you've done all that, even if you do all that perfectly, you're down to about, what, like 17 or 18 seconds left to go on the power play? So, I mean, good luck with that. And second unit wasn't really able to do much of anything. But yeah, just a brutal first power play chance for the Rangers in this game. And uh, it was a chance to take control because this was the chunk of the game where I thought they were starting to find their game, find their legs a little bit. It was still scoreless. You had a chance to, you know, take the lead and uh, just not able to take advantage there. And Again, not even just that they didn't score. It's just the fact that there's no scoring chances to speak of. It's not a whole lot going on. And uh, a shorthanded chance for the Canadians, which was probably the best chance that either team got for this whole two-minute power play. As far as the second power play opportunity that the Rangers got, this one was drawn by Jimmy Vesey. Uh, he was held by Slavkowski. Canadians get a quick clear. Uh, the Rangers gain the zone. Uh, Mika had a decent chance in deep. It was turned aside. I feel like, you know, Mika was kind of at a sharp angle here. He kind of just shot the puck into the goalie pads, but I think that was kind of by design. It looked to me like he was maybe uh, shooting for a rebound there. One of the few chances where the Rangers had some guys in deep. Lafreniere was there. I believe Trocek was there as well, but uh, it wasn't meant to be. Uh, you've got Panarin with a pass back to Adam Fox. Fox takes this pass. He's moving toward the goal. He really should have shot it here. I mean, we've seen Adam Fox score a goal on this play, uh, you know, several times in the past. He doesn't shoot. You know, he ends up passing it. And, you know, again, just just too pass happy, just too passing around the perimeter, too much passing around the perimeter uh, during the power play. So Canadians get another clear with 34 seconds left. Second unit jumps on with about 30 seconds left. So they got a little bit extra time here, but, you know, they weren't able to do anything either. The good news is that, you know, before there was even a whistle, so the, so the power play is over. But the play continues, and the Rangers do a nice job of keeping the puck in the Montreal zone and, you know, at least maintaining possession and trying to get a scoring chance. The Rangers drew a penalty here. So the Canadians are going to be shorthanded. The Rangers are going to go right back to work on the man advantage. And that never ends up happening because Panarin, with a great job, you know, carried the puck, held onto it for a long time, moving from the left side of the ice to the right side, and then uh, just lets a shot go and scores, ties the game at one-to-one. Uh, Hedl with the primary assist, Keandre Miller with the secondary. So great individual effort by Artemi Panarin there, uh, drawing the Rangers even and just firing the puck at the net. And what do you know? You fire the puck at the net, good things happen. So Panarin scores there. And, um, you know, that won't go into the books as a power play goal for the Rangers. And I can't really count it as one, but I mean, at least they scored during the six on five. They scored in a situation where they had more skaters on the ice than did their opponents. So uh, I guess biggers can't be choosers. We'll take it. But to kind of back up, you know, my my thoughts on the Ranger power play struggling, uh, it's not just the eye test. It's the cold, hard stats over the last handful of games for the Rangers. Uh, the last five games from this game tonight to the least recent game in descending order, uh, we'll go through that real quick. Uh, 0 for 2 in their most recent game, 0 for 4 the game before that, 0 for 3 the game before that, 0 for 2 the game before that, and 1 for 3 in the game before that. And that game where the Rangers went 1 for 3 on the power play, that was also against the Montreal Canadiens. That was the Rangers' 4-1 uh, to one win that they had in Montreal. That goal was scored by Philip Hedl while the Canadiens had an empty net. So in the last five games, the Rangers have not scored a power play goal. 
And what's interesting about that to me is the six most recent game that the Rangers have played. That was against the, Mon- or, uh, the Carolina Hurricanes. The Rangers went three for five in that game. So they're on fire. They're feeling it. And then they go into a pretty rough slump here. Just one for their next 14 chances in their next five games. And the one that they scored was when the net was empty. So not ideal. And obviously the Rangers are going to have to get it going here. Look, this power play is an important part of the Rangers' success. We saw that last season. We've seen it at times this season as well. And, you know, I'm willing to wait until Kreider comes back and give the, uh, you know, the the usual quintet, a couple of chances to work your way out of this. But maybe in the meantime, you, sh- you shake things up a little bit. The thing is, though, like, who do you move off of the, t- the Ranger top power play unit? You know, I guess you can move Lafreniere out of it and, and replace him with Kako or with Hedo. But for the, for the guys that are usually there, are you going to move Panarin? Are you going to move Fox? I mean, are you going to take Mika Zibanejad out of there? Maybe Trocek? Maybe you could drop Trocek down and give Philip Hedo a chance in his spot. The problem there, though is you've got, well, you know what? No, I was going to say you, you could have Philip Hedl, he would be taking the face off, but you could have Mika Zibanejad uh, take the face off for that unit. But bottom line, uh, something has to change here. They need a jolt. They need to just start playing a little bit better on the power play because uh, the Rangers, again, it's a team that definitely relies on the power play unit quite a bit, and uh, they're just not getting a lot of production out of said unit. But, yeah, we'll keep our fingers crossed that uh, against the uh, the Blue Jackets, the Rangers have a little bit better luck. Sooner or later, they, they got to get the power play rolling here, though. Also wanted to talk about uh, Keandre Miller having an eventful third period. And let me just preface this whole thing by saying that Miller has been awesome lately. We saw what he did in the last game. He had a secondary assist in this game as well. Uh, he's been phenomenal. There's been a little bit of a movement on social media to vote Keandre Miller into the All-Star game. There's so many Rangers that the fans want to get into the All-Star game. I almost feel like, you know, the, these teams should roster more players because, you know, they do it by division now. And every team gets one player automatically on the all-star team. And then there's only three spots left for the rest of the entire division. So I don't know. I I feel like more players should get the distinction of, you know, being an all-star. And I know they, they do it differently. Now the all-star game, it's like a weird tournament instead of Eastern conference against Western conference. But yeah, I I think it'd be fine to have a couple more all-stars throughout the league. But anyway, uh, Keandre Miller, um, getting back to him here. So he had a great chance in the attacking zone. This is tied one, one it's in the third period getting kind of late, you know, about midway through, approaching the midway point of the uh, third period. Miller is in, receives a pass. He's got all his momentum moving toward the net. And the way he's been going lately, you'd think that a goal is coming. He's either going to set somebody up for a tipping goal or he's just going to rip it himself and, uh, you know, put one in the net uh, by himself. Um, Unfortunately, that obviously did not happen because Miller basically just lost control of the puck and then the Canadians went the other way with it. Uh, puck goes into the ranger zone. It's behind the net. Miller approaches the puck, and he's looking like he's going to just, you know, pick it up and, and skate around the net and head out the zone the other way. Uh, was not able to do that, though. Basically just kind of overskated it, missed the puck, and unfortunately, uh, you know, who was it there? It was Suzuki. He was right there to pick up, capitalize on the uh, the miscue, pass in front to Caulfield, and uh, Caulfield scores, and just like that, it's 2-1 to one Canadians, and that, of course, was indeed the final score. But, you know, I also got to give props to Ke'Andre Miller for an unbelievable play that he made right after that. You had Suzuki on a breakaway, and Miller back-checking, man. He looked like he was just shot out of a cannon on this play. Uh, they measured how fast he was skating. They said 25 miles per hour. But, I mean, Suzuki was so far past Miller on this play that you didn't think there was any way Miller was going to catch up. Now, granted, Miller had a full head of steam, and Suzuki had to wait just a second for the puck to get there. But still, I mean, he was way in front of Miller, and Miller nevertheless uh, goes flying back, catches up to him, and just whacks the puck away from him, knocks it into the corner, and out of harm's way. So a phenomenal play by Keandre Miller there. And as far as, you know, the rough shift that he had in the third period, I'll file that under it happens. You know, he's been absolutely outstanding for this team recently. These guys aren't machines. It's going to happen from time to time. And unfortunately, uh, Keandre Miller and the Rangers uh, paid for his miscue that he had uh, in the third period there, overskating that puck, led right to a Montreal goal, which is obviously unfortunate. But what did turn our attention to? Final couple of minutes here, obviously the Rangers down 2-1. to one, And I mean, hey, the Rangers have been playing well recently. Obviously, they had that really dramatic win uh, against the Stars where they scored with less than a second remaining. And you're kind of looking like, okay, who's going to be the hero? How is it going to happen tonight? I thought the best chance that the Rangers had in the last, you know, five minutes or so 
happened with about 3.30 to go or maybe four minutes to go. Uh, the Rangers were in the uh, Montreal zone. They were swarming a little bit. Puck came loose to Panarin in front, or, or somebody might have passed it to him, but uh, the puck came out of the corner, went in front to Artemi Panarin, and he had a golden chance there right from the edge of the right face-off circle, prime real estate. Uh, the save was made, though. Uh, it was blockered aside, and uh, Panarin could not score there, so obviously the Rangers still down by a goal. I mentioned uh, a couple minutes ago here in today's episode, though, that there was something that the Rangers did down the stretch in this game that just kind of made me scratch my head a little bit, and that was putting Johnny Brodzinski on the ice, or I, maybe he was already out there, and you know he just stayed on a little bit longer than the Rangers thought that he might. Maybe he couldn't get off for a line change. But the bottom line, the thing that we know for sure, is that Johnny Brodzinski was on the ice for the New York Rangers while the Rangers were trailing by a goal while the net was empty. There's no reason for that. And, and you know, Brodzinski, it's nothing against him. You know, he plays hard and, you know, I've, I've expressed my admiration for him, you know, doing whatever this franchise needs, bouncing up and down a million times between the Rangers and the Wolfpack, going back and forth all these times over the years. But Johnny Brodzinski on a team like this should, or probably any team really, should not be on the ice when you're looking for the game time goal with less than two minutes to go. I'm sorry, he just shouldn't. Uh, he eventually got off the ice, and the Rangers went with the usual suspects, the guys that you would probably expect to be on the ice in a situation like that. You know, they got another chance. You know, Fox put the puck at the net, and uh, Kaka was there in the crease. He was hammering away at the rebound, trying to stuff at home, was not able to do so. Canadians take an icing with 49 seconds to go. Rangers call the timeout, and they go with Mika, Miller, Panarin, Fox, Trocek and Lafreniere. Unfortunately, Trocek, a rare face-off loss. Puck comes out of the zone. Um, you had Panarin taking a shot from the blue line. It was turned aside, and, you know, it was cleared down the ice, and Keandre Miller had to go get it. He starts back up the ice with only 15 seconds left, shoots it into the zone, but the Rangers really didn't get much of a chance in the final few seconds here. Toward the very end, they at least got to play the puck toward the net, and, man, you know— Again, when you're coming off of a win like the Rangers had against the Stars, you're kind of looking uh, for the heroics and who's it going to be, who's going to tie the game tonight, but uh, unfortunately was just not meant to be. And, uh, you know, time ran out on the Rangers. And, uh, again, a little bit of a lackluster game for this team, but you look for the bounce back, hopefully, uh, against the Columbus Blue Jackets on Monday night. Um, but that will do it for today, guys. Once again, just a huge, huge thank you to everybody that has supported this show in any way, to anybody that's reached out to me and, you just talk Ranger hockey with me, DM me on Twitter, left a comment in the YouTube section, sent me an email. A lot of you guys, you know, play in the fantasy league as well. That's always a lot of fun. And uh, yeah, it's just awesome, man. It's awesome that we have this uh, cool little Ranger community that we have here. And um, yeah, just, just looking forward to continuing to do this show. And again, as I always say, going through the, the roller coaster that is Ranger hockey with everybody that listens uh, to this show. And for anybody that might be New, I mean, hey, there might be some first-time listeners say, stick around, you know, enjoy the community, talk to each other on YouTube, talk to each other in the YouTube comments section, have some fun, you know, it, it's we have a lot of fun on this show. That's that's pretty much the long and short of it. But again, thank you guys so much for all the support, and uh, here's to the next 750. So, yeah, thanks again, guys, and uh, I will see you next time. I should also mention, though, that if you'd like to get in touch with this podcast, please send an email to LockedOnNYRangers at gmail.com. Once again, that is LockedOnNYRangers at gmail.com. And definitely give us a follow on Twitter at LO underscore NY underscore Rangers. Once again, that's at LO underscore NY underscore Rangers. And definitely subscribe to Locked On New York Rangers YouTube channel. Thanks again, guys, very much. Thank you for helping get to me to uh, episode number 750 here. Hope everybody's doing well out there. Have a great night. I will see you next time.